understand, sir. I thought you'd be pleased. Indeed. Your bright legal mind is slowing down, Frank. Mr. Carlyle, you gain control of Wilton Electronics at half of what it's worth. Naturally. But Lambert didn't exactly follow my orders, did he, Frank? That couldn't be helped, sir. Word got out that you were after the company. Of course, if you want to uh, cancel out. Hardly. Close the deal. Congratulations. It's a fine acquisition. And fire Lambert. Mr. Carlisle. He did deliver. But not at my price, Frank. Lambert's a good man. He's been with you for years. Maybe too many years, Frank. Man gets in a rut, becomes too sure. That's the incredible part about life, Frank. You can never be sure not about anything. Charlie Mace, look, call me tonight. No matter what time you get home, please. I, I get hold of the big ones, the loot train. The case to end them all. But, but I'm afraid of it, Adam. I can't handle it by myself. Please, Adam, please, tonight. Mr. Carlisle. Can you hear me? I hear you. What's your name? Martin Carlyle. Now I want the truth. You hired Charlie Mace. The truth. Only the truth. I hired Mace. Why? Find someone. Who? What name? What name? Alicia. so hard to find. How's Mamacita? Fine. Whose message was that? Charlie Mace. He's dead, Adam. I can hold up the big one. The loop train. The case to end them all. But, but I'm afraid of it, Adam. I can't handle it by myself. Please, Adam, please, tonight. Some loot train. We fished him out of the bay an hour ago. Chance it was accidental. Convince me. A 38 slug in the chest, no water in the lungs, multiple glass cuts, half the bones in his body broken. Any idea what he was chasing? I haven't seen him in months. It's funny, I heard you were feeding him. Want a scotch? 
No, and what are you so feisty about? Charlie, don't make him sound like a charity case. Back off, Adam. I know how you felt about him. Not nearly. I owe him, Sam. All this, everything. He taught me the business, every move in the rat race. It's a two-way street, Adam. You paid back. Well, it's been grim. Just like that, huh? Goodbye, Charlie. Sorry to see you go. I'll keep scrounging, but don't hold your breath. I'm tapped out. No more leads. But if you get any ideas, don't be shy. <laughs> Chili Raleno. She lives Beautiful. Oh. My mama flunked sandwiches. Well, don't be coy. Take it with you. How can you eat that stuff? It ain't easy. But on a civil servant's salary, even the taste buds learn to compromise. <laughs> Whiskey money, Adam. Sure. I wanted a second lead for Richard Dix. I ever tell you about that? I know, Luther. Luther, about Charlie. I should have known something was coming down. Plainer. He, he was different lately. He acted like he was on fire. He kept hinting about the biggest case in all the world. I thought it was just a bottle. He didn't name any names? No. I remember the name on the check, though. How often in a lifetime do you see a check for $5,000? A check? To Charlie? From Mar Car Industries. I thought it was just a phony, though, you know? Like a newspaper headline, you know? You got style, Adam. Stay well. It's gonna be lonesome without Charlie. Diego account. I'd like to see Mr. Carlyle. I called earlier. Perhaps you'd like to discuss your business a little more fully. Well, that was the idea, Miss Hudson, but uh, with Mr. Carlyle. Hmm. At this hour, without an appointment. Live a little, Miss Hudson. Play it by ear. Sorry, out of the question. Last time around the track, Miss Hudson. I think maybe these could do it. Miss Hudson. Miss Hudson. I know Carlisle is the third wealthiest man in the world. I am properly impressed, and I couldn't care less. I don't want his money, a job, just a two-minute conversation. Two minutes. A forceful man. I didn't think there were any left. Pick up the phone, Miss Sutton. Mention my name. Also, the name Charlie Mace. And the $5,000 check on Marcard Industries. That should bring a little rain. Uh, would you settle for Mr. Lacey? He heads Mr. Carlyle's legal staff. Good for him. Now, do you make the call, or would you like a lieutenant to come back and ask the same questions? He's not nearly as charming as I am. Sir, can you spare two minutes? You have two minutes, Mr. Steele. You don't take that long. Mind telling me why you hired Charlie Mace? What makes you think I hired? Mr. Carlyle. Charlie's dead. He had your check. Mark R. is many companies, Mr. All Trump. owned by you. I don't mean to be rude, sir, but uh, I have to know that, Charlie. We were very close. 
Very well, it was a business matter, completely confidential. I often use private investigators. No good. I beg your pardon. I can name three you've used, all A-rated industrial specialists. Charlie was an old man just trying to hang in there, leaving hand to mouth. Your two minutes are up, Mr. Steele. Now hold it, Carlisle. It's a simple question. Get out! No! Get out! Trouble sleeping? <laughs> I like Charlie too, you know. The office hasn't been searched. The files seem to be in order. Hold on to your hat. What? Well, well. Here we go. What is it, a secret? Charlie had a dream client. Martin Carlyle. Your friendly neighborhood billionaire. Charlie also kept the best files I ever saw, but no Carlisle here. Interesting. Not a scratch. Mm. No one broke into it. Maybe he didn't have to. You're saying Charlie lifted his own file folder. That's an old trick of the trade. Sometimes you lift a hot one, hide it somewhere else for safekeeping. Do you know the size of this city? I know Charlie's style. This building got a basement? old enough to have a moat. Want to come along? Not if I want to keep my happy home. Go ahead, scratch around if you like. But uh, keep in touch. Let me know if you find anything. Mm -hmm. Kept a bottle in the desk. <laughs> Sam Fay didn't have my wife. She's still trying to bring back prohibition. Why don't you relax, Adam? Maybe you remember something else. I told you there isn't anything else. I saw one name in that file before the building fell in. Subject, Miss Felicia Sandel. Period. Well, if you come up with anything on Felicia Sandel, bring out the tidings, will you? I will. Where will he be? Home, watching a 35-year-old man drinking 25-year-old scotch. Me. Oh. Traffic here must be something. Hmm? Are you taking a poll? Is it 
celebrate my birthday. I've been wanting to do that since yesterday. You're tired. No, no, it's just that I... I... Better rest. Mother will take care of everything. Hurt yourself? In a way, yes. Like to talk about it? No, not really. Thank you. To what? No, oh, you'll think of something. Martin Carlyle? He's something. He's also very sorry he lost his temper yesterday. Sends his apologies. Whose idea? His or yours? I'm his administrative assistant. Oh, I know, I know. Gina Sutton, executive. 75,000 per. Very influential. Eight years with Mark Carr. Member board of directors, parent company, plus four of the subsidiaries. Huh. Been doing your homework. It goes with the territory. Tell me, do you always go around uh, apologizing for Carlisle's temper? Goes with the territory. <sighs> Am I making amends? Uh, you're getting there. Oh, tough negotiator, huh? It's a marvelous nose. I'd like another meeting with Carlisle. Right back into the lion's mouth, huh? That's the name of the game. Frank would be the one to set it up. Frank Lacey, head of legal, number two man at Mark Carr, Princeton, Harvard Law, and Cambridge. Boy, if we had your sources. <laughs> it's a matter of survival. Speaking of which... Stop stalling. Diversification is always the keynote, not duplication. You do well to remember. Ah, Mr. Steele. Welcome. Welcome. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. Well, that's quite all right, Mr. Steele. I trust Miss Sutton conveyed my apologies. Yes, sir. Very gracious of you. Well, was there anything else, Mr. Steele? Um, does your uh, hospitality extend to one more question? Well, that depends upon the question, Mr. Steele. It's about a woman named um, Felicia Santel. I just... <laughs> Who sent you? What are you trying to do to me? What are you trying to do to get out? Get him out of here! Medical degree, are you? Not lately, but my doctor's got a wall full. Took him about two seconds to finger that. Nitroglycerin tablet. Stock prescription for coronary patients. Bum thick is one thing, but those rages of Carlisle. Temper. What is that? I don't know, but it's a wild floor show, believe it. Listen, you come up with anything on Felicia Santel yet? Don't worry. If she's around, we'll find her. They better be fast. Got a nagging feeling a lot of people are looking. <laughs> Tell me, is Miss Tate there? Oh, I see. 
No, no, don't bother. I'll get back in the morning. Uh, at what time is she due on the set, do you know? I see. All right, thank you. vacations in the country of murder. I've got to talk to you, Adam. It's very important. Get anything? No, nothing missing. Well, who do a thing like this? That's a good question. Here, get it down. Things will look brighter tomorrow. Uh, if there is one. I think I'm next, Adam. Just like Charlie, I'm being watched and followed. There's this man. I've seen him three or four times. At the toy store, outside my rooming house, every place. What's he look like? Tall, kind of blonde. Mustache. Rimless glasses. Yeah, that's him. Do you know him? Funny. Until this minute, I would have sworn I had dreamed him up. When did you see him last? This afternoon, at the toy store. It's uh, pretty late. Why not stay the night? That's a real comfortable couch. I thought you'd never ask. It's a long time since I've been on a lot. I don't think I ever told you. You know, I did a bit part in a Vicky Kate movie. Oh, way back. I don't suppose she'd even remember. Don't bet the rent money. Don't we have to have a pass? No, they know me. All right, roll it. Action. You're new in town, aren't you? Cut. Beautiful. Mm, oh, lovely. Don't tell me. I know. I remember ages ago. The Honolulu affair, right? It's nice you remember, Miss Tate. And where have you been hunting? Mm, in all the wrong places. <laughs> Got time for a chat? Yes. Uh, it's okay if I wander? Why, of course. Why don't we go back here where we can talk? All right. Let's sit in here, okay? All right. You know, you were very kind to Luther, Vicky. <laughs> It's the story of my life. Kind, Vicky, helpful, Vicky. Let's hope so. That's it. Take it or leave it. And again, he threw me out of the house. Now, isn't that a wild story? That's better than one we're shooting. All contributions gratefully accepted. You're a beautiful Adam. I love you when you're being tactful. You don't mind talking about Carlisle? Brule. 
If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> Carlisle found me selling magazine subscriptions. Did you know that? No, I didn't. But one day, I just walked up to this big house in Holmby Hills and tried to sell him a magazine. He tried to sell me Martin Carlyle. All right, you mean he... Action. He made a pass. Loud and clear. I said no. But without realizing it, I said the one thing that Martin Carlyle cannot stand. The word no. He chased me for six months. I did more ducking than Harry Grab. Oh, I just wish I'd get on ducking. Beautiful. He'd never even seen a studio. But he bought one, this one, just to make me a star. The Carlisle version of love. <laughs> it was incredible. I was the worst actress I ever thought. Oh, now, Vicky. And then one day, suddenly, there was love. He was a nice, gentle, attractive nobody. Dialogue director named Don Brent. And he did know acting. And he taught me just enough. And suddenly, the public bought. Well, Carlyle was furious. He's never forgiven me for my disloyalty. But he couldn't hurt me anymore. So he took it all out on Don. Had him blackballed. It drove Don straight into a sanitarium. He, uh... He's never coming out. But Carlyle still owns your contract, right? Exclusively. You bring him a script that's bad enough, and he'll make sure I star in it. Nice? It sounds like a candidate for a straitjacket. He's a full-time paranoic. He's got delusions of persecution out to here, the whole bit. Vicky, um, were there many gals in Carlisle's life? No. Do you remember Felicia Santel? No, I never heard the name. Oh. If it's any comfort to you, he's very partial to actresses. Thank you. Don't stay away so long. The only time you want to sell a magazine subscription, you've got a customer. Promises. Always promises. Foreclosed any good companies today? Well, the next time I throw myself at a fella. Uh-oh. Are we grumpy? Sure. I saw you on the Meridian lot today. You drove right by my office and out. Not so much as a let lunch. Well, busy, busy. I might let you make it up with a late supper. Maybe, after I see Carlisle. Can do. Boy, talk about a one-track mind. Yes, love. Is he in? Adam, you know how you affect him. Boom, World War III. Not this time. Let's try a new calling card. That the recommended therapy for a heart condition? At least be accurate, Mr. Steele. Do you know what an aneurysm is? Vaguely. Kind of a uh, bubble in the wall of an artery. Is that right? Quite. And in my particular case, the artery is in my heart. Well, what about uh, surgery? It's a dangerous business at best, and with or without it, there's no guarantees. How long does that give you? Uh, there's no telling. Maybe six months, maybe tonight. You trying for tonight? Mr. Steele, let me ask you something. How old are you? About 33? 35. 35. 38. Really? Yeah, well, I'm 50. Have you have any idea what I've accomplished in that time? Oh, I know your credit. I control over $2 billion. Literally thousands of people. There is nothing in this world that I want that I cannot have. Except getting to 51. <laughs> touche. Mr. Steele, touche. I... Now, you didn't have to tell me that. Why? You're a persistent man, Mr. Steele. Maybe I should have hired you in the first place. To find... Um... Felicia Santel? Right. You name your fee, I'm prepared to pay. Name. Broken. Mr. Steele? What's the matter?
Was that broken recently? Repaired? As a matter of fact, it was. There's a road that winds above the house. The masseur said a couple of youngsters were tossing rocks. Masseur? What's he look like? <laughs> Mr. Steele, I fail to see the point. Humor me. All right, he's tall, blonde, rimless glasses. Yeah. I want his address. It's important. Very well, Mr. Steele. Yes, sir. Gina, listen, don't we have Garth's home address around someplace? Of course, won't be a moment. Sometime, monsieur, specialty narcotics. I know. Counts of possession, selling, transporting. I know, I know. Progressive. <laughs> man who keeps up with the time. Very large for hypnotic drugs lately. Lieutenant. Six counts. Sam, them. I've memorized it. <clears throat> Schaefer, go ahead. Yeah. Right. Fine, got it. Thank you, Ed. The lab. They checked Garth's gun against the slugs they found in Charlie Mace. Perfect match. So, Garth killed Charlie Mace. Which means Garth was killed probably to shut his mouth. Now you're moving. Sure. To a glorious grinding halt. Because of all the little whys and whos. Like, why does Carlyle really want Felicia found? And who doesn't want her found? And for what reason? What do you mean? May as well crawl my walls. They're prettier than yours. You know, I never felt so foolish in my life. There are times when I can't stand this business. So give back all the money you made in it. I said I felt foolish, not stupid.
That's enough. Hold it. always wins. The dying man? He... He was going to change his will. Everything would go to her. Felicia Santel. Who is she, Gina? Well, nobody. Quick love affair. Years ago. 
obsession with him. Look, don't you see? She could snap the fingers. And, and you'd lose the biggest job in my car. All losers. Me. Frank Lacey. Everyone. So you had to find her. Make sure she wasn't alive to inherit. I thought I was chasing Frank Lacey. Uh, he didn't have the nerve. Gina. Gina. You hired Garth. Hired him. Killed him. Still crazy for that. Nose. You want to buy a magazine, mister? I'm working my way through school. That's what I like about this apartment. I never know what I'm coming home to. I had to hear the end of the story. Nice, upbeat finish. I just left Felicia Santel and her husband. Nice people, all three. Oh, there's a boy. Carlisle's son. The husband is quite a fellow. Knows the whole story, couldn't care less. Adopted the child the day he was born. Well, all's well that ends. Almost. What does that tell you? The way it was. Charlie Mays came to you trying for a lead to Felicia Santel. You realized how important it must be to Carlisle, so you hired Luther to get his hands on it if and when Charlie came up with it. Luther was on his way to your bungalow to deliver it. Don't you understand? If it was important, I could sell it to Carlisle, make him tear up my contract, begin to live. Oh, Adam, I wanted it. Everyone wants something. No one's blaming you. I am. If it weren't for me, Luther would... Another time, Adam. You don't mind. are filled with game show fun and excitement on CBN. It all gets underway at 4 Eastern with Blockbusters. Now stay with us for Pat Boone USA, next on CBN Cable. <laughs>